Well, good evening. Okay, are we recording? Okay, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you once again for the Sabbath, for the fellowship that we can have. We pray for each person, and we pray for your wisdom and understanding as we open your word together, as we look at the cross of Christ, the midst of the week. And I pray, Lord, that um, those hearing this message can take time to examine these truths to see whether or not they are so. May your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts and our minds. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we've already gone through two of these studies, um, the midst of the week, and this is the third one. And this study on the midst of the week, it came about, as I mentioned before, because I was studying Samuel Snow's letters. And I know that Samuel Snow had come to understand that Jesus was crucified in the midst of the week, that is, instead of at the end of the 70th week, he was crucified, as, as Miller had him crucified in 33 AD. Um, Samuel Snow recognized that Jesus was crucified in 31 AD. And as Seventh-day Adventists, we know that if that is the case, that we should be able to Uh, prove it in some way that Jesus was crucified in 31 AD. It's one of the attacks that often is made not just outside of Adventism but within Adventism against the 70 weeks and the 2300 days is that we have a wrong chronology. And I've spent 40 some years as a Seventh-day Adventist studying this trying to understand the problem and the issue of when Jesus is crucified. But as I came to study the calendars and, and, and to study the chronology of the Bible, it became evident that there's so much evidence that Jesus was cru- crucified April 27th in 31 AD, and not on the Thursday, and not on a Wednesday, but on a Friday, and that he wasn't crucified in 30 AD, or 33 AD, or some other AD. He was crucified then, just as... Samuel Snow pointed out. But Samuel Snow didn't really have the evidence for that. One of the things that's quite interesting about uh, how God unfolds truth is that sometimes he gives us the answer to the question, but we haven't had the question yet. That is, he gives us the conclusion, but we don't have all of the evidences that lead to that conclusion. A good example of this would be August 11th, 1840. When Josiah Litch chose that date, he actually had lots of different dates he could have chosen. He could have used different types of calendars. But he just decided the simplest thing was to say, we have July 27th, 1299. I know it's a Julian date, but I'm going to ignore that because if I try to sort it out, I'm going to have too many options. And then... He looks at July 27th, 1840. I'm going to just count 14 days from that date. I'm going to get August 11th. Now, if he knew the biblical calendar, he would have known that the 26th day in the fourth month in 1299 was the Julian date, July 27th, and that all he needed to do was look for the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar in 1840. Now, it also happens to be July 27th, Gregorian. So... If he had done that, he would have said, oh, that's simple. That is the correct one. I don't even need to look at these others. But we don't know exactly what went through his mind. But the point is, God made it so that he would arrive at the right date, August 11th, 1840. And there's lots of things like that. Um, And Samuel Snow's having Jesus crucified in the midst of the week based upon a document that actually had lots of contradictory information in it. Um, he not, didn't fully understand the biblical calendar, uh, but he just, at least he had the right date when Jesus was crucified, at least the right year. I don't know if he had, what date he had, because he doesn't tell us what date that would be on the Julian calendar. 
but he at least has the year, 31 AD. And we now know it has to be April 27th, 31 AD. So that's the midst of the week. Now we know the midst of the week is um, the midst of the week is the cross of Christ. I mean, this is the center of the gospel. This is the promise made to Adam and Eve that the seed of the woman would bruise the serpent's head and the serpent would bruise his heel. And we know that all of this chronology, all this story that we have starting at the beginning of creation from that promised seed down through Seth, through all the different patriarchs, through Lamech, through Noah, right? Through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph. Well, it's not going to be Joseph, it's going to be Judah. But Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Judah, right? We're going to be following down through these lines the seed of Christ, the seed of the woman that's going to be fulfilled when Christ is born as a babe in Bethlehem. That's part of it. That's the seed of the woman. But he still, the serpent has to bruise his heel when he bruises the serpent's head. So that cross of Christ is essential to salvation. It is not some afterthought because Christ is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. God's purposes, his character, before he created anything, have been bound up in his self-sacrificing character, his unconditional love, that he loves even though we hate him. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So this is an important thing, and it's based upon the covenant. Now, so when we look at this midst of the week, it's the week of Christ study, Sometimes I call it, but the study was originally called the midst of the week. And we know um, we have Jesus crucified, right? April 27th, 31 AD. That's the cross of Christ. <clears throat> but this week, we also call it what week? It's the 70th week, but in Daniel chapter 9, he's going, to con- he's going to do what in one week? Covenant. He's going to confirm the covenant. Now, what covenant is that? Where is that covenant given? This, this covenant here. Sinai. Well, but Gen- it goes back. Genesis be- well, 3.15. Okay, so we can deal with the seed of the woman, right? That, that's the promise, but the covenant that's being made is going to be made with Abraham, right? This is the everlasting covenant. It's made with Abraham. Now, we know that the promise of that covenant is Genesis 3.15, but we also know that it's going to be Abraham that this, that's going to carry on this. So, obviously, we have the seed of the woman all the way through. It comes to Abraham, then Isaac to Jacob, then to Judah, Right? That's where this Christ is going to descend from Judah. But so this is a covenant. We've talked a lot about covenants. It's the covenant week. Now, when we, we looked at this earlier, we know that we have this date, the first day of the first month, which is April 5th in 2030. Right? So this date comes from this covenant week. And this story connects us to the story of Ezra. right? But it connects us to lots of other stories. Because this, this is about Christ being crucified on the cross. So when we get this date here, we need to remember that it's connected to this date here. And this, we know in Abraham, he has a covenant, and it's Genesis 15 that I usually focus on. Because in Genesis 15, 
you're going to have the animals that are cut in half. You're going to have um, a bullock that's cut in half, and you're going to have a goat, and you're going to have a sheep, right? And you're going to have a turtle dove and a young pigeon. They're not going to be cut in half, but they're going to be put on either side. And you're going to make a covenant. You're going to walk through those, right? Walk through the animals that are slain. And if I don't keep my covenant, what happened to those animals is going to happen to me, right? So Christ walks through those animals. He's saying that the serpent's going to bruise his head. He's going to bruise the serpent's head, but the serpent is going to bruise his heel. He is the one that walks in the midst of this chiasm, right? It's a chiasm. And we see that all of these chiasms throughout Scripture, they're illustrating the cross of Christ. Sure, we have a lot of chronology and a lot of interesting things that we find in doing this, but it's about the cross of Christ in the midst of the week. It's about the covenants that were made to Abraham. Now, when we... So I had this date back in 2018. Now, if, if I remember correctly, and, and I might have written it in my notes, uh, the first time that I talk about it, it's right here, actually, on the first page of this, uh, section three. Um, I presented this date share this date with others in an email on October 13th, 2021. So on October 13th, 2021, I'm going to mention this. Here's what I'm going to say in this email. So it's easiest to read it. 2300 months is exactly 186 biblical years. So that is if we take 2300 months And we multiply them by 29.530587 days, because that's the length of a month. I'm going to get 67,920 days. Right? That's 2,300 months. And we know in 1843, at the end of the 2,300 days, you're going to have from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the 7th month, 186 days, right? This is the 187th day, if this is the first day, but just a cardinal count is 186. So at the end of 186 years, I would start the 187th year, right? So 2,300 months, we know that when we count here, this is, we're going to be counting this from Millerite history. I'm just going to put it here, 1844. Now, in this line of the week of Christ, we had the 10th day of the 7th month in 1844. So, we could do this. We can say the first day of the first month in 1844. This is going to be April uh, 19th. Now, I'm drawing... You know, this this way, this is, I'm not drawing the days, I'm just drawing the years, right? So the first day of the first month, is 1844, is April 19th. And the 10th day of the seventh month, so I don't want to, con- so this is October 22. And we know that's 186 days between here, right? So this is just the same year on that way mark. Of there, but I'm, I'm separating it out here. I'm kind of zooming into that year. And we can see this in here. And I know if I go from October 22, 1844, and I count years, it's going to bring me from this date to this date is exactly 2,300 months. Right? So I'm going backwards, but you get the idea. So it's 2,300 months from that date to that date. That can't be just some kind of a coincidence that we have. Because I have that first day of the first month already in 2030. And I have that in the story of Ezra. I have it many different ways. But here, I just have this. So I send this email. 
So I say from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030 is 186 years or 2300 months. Um, and I say, I know of a person who uses this to mark the time when he believes the second coming will incur, an event we cannot know the timing of. It is interesting that it is the fifth day of the fourth month, April 5th in 2030, so that's a symbol. And since the Julian date is March 23rd, 20, 2030, for the first day of the first month in 2030, um, so that's the Julian date, it is inter interesting that this date falls on 3,023 3, days after the December 25th, 2021 in chiasm, which is a symbol of the 20 day, 23rd day of the third month. Um, it is also 3,800 3, days after November 9th, 2019, which is a nice round number. So I'm just, I'm just observing these things. Uh, I'm not suggesting we can place events that far into the future or that the world will last that long. It may simply be part of a symbolic structure. Now I'm saying this on October 13th, 2021. So this is going to be three years to the day from when I had done that calculation uh, pointing to November 9th, 2019. And I say 186 Islamic years from July 27th, 1840, starting on the 26th day of the fourth biblical month, uh, bring us to the evening of January 10th, 2021. Uh, the 10th day of the first month is a symbol of, so January 10th being the 10th day of the first month, is a symbol of, of 2021 for the week of Christ. So in the week of Christ study, that January 10th, 2021 date is the date that marks 21. So January 10th marks 2021. So the 10th day of the first month on the rabbinic calendar for 2021 is March 23rd. This is the date that Dan Vanderhorst has addressed. These are some thoughts to consider. So I mention it there. Now I don't mention it again in an email until January 24th, 2022. So um, I don't know how many days that is, October 20th, October 13th, um, you got November and December, so that's going to be uh, 61 days plus the uh, 18 days from left over from October, so you're going to have uh, 16 days plus 18, that's 28, 28 for the 10 days, so you got 28 plus uh, 61 so that's going to be uh, 80, 87 day, 89 days. So does that make sense? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm just counting those. So anyway, there's this period of time, three months later and you know, another 10 days or so. Anyway, as we noted in the morning study of the previous day, so on January 20th, on January 24th, I'm going to write early in the morning, like 1.30 in the morning or something. I'm going to write this email. And I'm just saying, we just noticed this. Now, what we had noticed is we had gone through the covenants of Abraham, right? So we're dealing with the covenant. This is about the covenant week. And we went through the covenants of Abraham. And Abraham's covenants are in chapter 12, chapter 15, chapter 17. That's circumcision. That's the walking between the carcasses. That's when he's told that his seed shall, you know, this promise of Get out from your land, from your country, from your kindred. I'll give you the promised land. And then it's going to be actuated in this 3-1 combination when he offers up his son Isaac in 22. And somebody noted, I can't remember who it was. It doesn't really matter. But we multiplied these together. And we got this number, 67,320. Now, that number looked familiar. Now, if you divide this by... 360, you're going to get 187, right? So they noted that's 187 prophetic years. But I remembered this number, uh, 67920, and I noted, well, that's 600 difference. Right? So it's pretty simple. So that's going to equal 600, whoops, so we're used to writing 666, 600, and 600 is 20 prophetic months, so that's 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months, so we get that 187-2020 symbol, 
And that's all just pointing to April 5th, 2030. <clears throat> so I note that, right? I, I write down the calculation. I show just what I did here, that we're looking at uh, lunar solar years. Um, that's 187 lunar solar years. That is biblical year. Um, so it's 600 days more than this other number. And it's also 2,300 months, I mentioned again, right? So... 187 solar years going up to that date, counting like the 187th year. And, um, in a, and then I say, in our week of Christ structure, the first day of the first month is 2030. And this is how I drew it out in 2018. So I have the drawing. And I say, of course, I do not believe we can predict such event, especially if we were to mark it as April 5th, 2030. So I'm not going to predict it, even though on that one I put April 5th, second coming. <laughs> right, but that was just me playing around with the charts. I wasn't really predicting that date. And then I looked at 2,300 prophetic months. That's 6,900 days. Uh, the difference between that is 1,080 days or 36 prophetic months. And I didn't know what that meant, but that's going to be 36, or that's going to be three prophetic years. That's the difference between it. 1,080 days. And I'm not one to put things off into the future. Well, unless it's something I don't want to do. Um, I simply present this as an observation, right? So actually, the thing that I do put off in the future is sin. Things I don't, I know that I want, want to do, I shouldn't say I put them off in the future, but I don't do them now. That is, you know, if I'm going to eat something that I, that, uh, uh, that I shouldn't be eating, I'll just say, well, I'm not going to eat it today. I worry about today. I don't worry about tomorrow, right? I overcome sin today. Tomorrow's going to be today. And when it's today, I overcome sin that day. Make sense? But that's the only thing I put off into the future. Um, I like to get things done now. Now, we found many more evidences for this. Now, one of them came from Colin's structure. So I've talked about that, but I haven't presented it. So Colin used this structure, and I don't know if I can even remember it all, exactly how it went, but we're going to have an election. Um, and this is going to be November 3rd. Um, 2020. So what happens there? Biden. Biden is elected. So we're just going to look at it in this really simple way. Ian. Yeah, he's more like Biden is time. So, <laughs> and then we're going to have. Uh, when does he become president? Twentieth January. Okay, so January 20, 2021. And um, we're also going to have the Siege of Washington, right? So you're going to have January 6th, 2021, right? Now, how many days is it between here and here? Is that 46? Hmm? Well, if November, December, January, you're going to normally, if you did, it would be 61, but it's going to be 64, right? 64, right. But it's going to be inclusive. So this is 64, but we're going to call it 65. It's inclusive. So one of the things about this is when we had this, this election, um, you know, we're not anticipating this January 6th date is going to come up. And I wrote this one here because um, this date ended up, you know, we tried to find things with this date, but we didn't find anything, right? But then this date popped up and all of a sudden we had some structure. And, and this is the 65 years. Now, you can take the 65 years and you can divide them into what? So 46 and 19. So if you go 46 and 19, 
you're going to get a date in here. Now, it depends how you do this as far as am I counting this inclusive or this one inclusive, right? But you're going to end up with date in here. So if I did it so this is the 46th day, that makes the most sense to me because I'm saying this is the 65th. So if I was going to count 15 days before January 16th, or no, not, pardon me, 19 days before January 6th, um, where, what date would I get? So January 6th to 1st is five days, and then I need two weeks before, so I've got to get to uh, some other date, right? Am I doing this right? Did I, should I put the 46th there and the 19th or the other way around? I think it needs to go the other way around, right? Right. Okay, that's what I'm doing wrong. So I'm going to do 19 and 46. Okay. So what's 19 days after November 3rd? There, then I get the date I wanted. So that's going to be November 22nd, right? Okay. I was trying to do the math, and it just didn't make sense. <laughs> okay. I'm probably a little bit tired. So, so we have 65. Now, we need to connect this to something over here. Now, what they're going to connect it to is, is an election two years later, right? So we're going to have an election over here. So we're going to have November 8th, 20, 2022, right? And if I'm going to count 65 days from there, so I'm going to go 46 and 19. This is going to be the 65th day here. This date would be January 11th, 2023, right? Now, Colin didn't do this. He talked about the 46th Democratic or American president and the 19th Republican, and he just used these symbols. He's saying, you know, that Trump is going to become the president again, and he's not going to call himself, you know, he's still going to consider himself the 45th, which is the 19th Republican president. He's just going to feel this was in illegitimate. But we have this transition between these two. And if I count 46 days, um, that's going to bring me to December. December what? Yeah, so now you're counting is this as inclusive to get there, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we did. December 24th, 2022. And what we looked at is there was these, um, these center dates. So we're going to have some spans of time between this date and these other dates. And I don't remember how they'd go, but we're going to have spans of time that relate to the July 18, 2020 prediction. And I don't have it drawn here, I don't think. I should have probably put this diagram in here, uh, but I didn't. <clears throat> so I'll have, to, um, I'll have to put that in the notes when I republish it. But what we have is we have these dates are connected, and they're connected by the symbols of July 18, 2020. So, I mean, if you can, can you bring up, just bring up the calendar converter? Because yeah, we got lots of time here. So if you, thank, thank you for doing that. <clears throat> so let's just put these dates in. So let's uh, put November 3rd, 2020 in here. Clear out all those ones. And so this is what you would do. You'd go to this calendar converter. You'd put these dates in here. So this is going to be November 3rd. He's got, uh, you've got to get it to 2020. It's on 2030 right now. All right. So just change that. Okay. Okay. And then can you put in December 24th, 2022 as your next date? So they're just going to jump over here, and I'll just show you what 
what this is because I'm pretty sure I know what it's going to do. Okay, and if you save that one, it will give us a count at the bottom. There will be a little chart. And he's just going to scroll down here. And it's going to say it's 781 days. So if we go from this date to this date, it's 781 days. So 781 is a symbol of July 18, but it's, it's 187 backwards, right? Right. So when we see 781, we know that symbolizes July 18th. And this is part of the thing that Odilio showed us in his study, seven weeks after Colin's study, is he was using some of these symbols. Now, if you put these other dates in there, such as um, November 22nd to January 11th, we're going to end up with 780 days in here somewhere. And we know that in 780 days, if you multiply that by 24, it's going to be 18720 hours, right? So we end up with this symbol of July 18, 2020 uh, in doing this. So if you can just complete putting those dates in there, I'd really appreciate it. So just 78 times 24. Yeah, so that's the number we get. <clears throat> Now, when Colin is doing this, remember, he's making this prediction on December 25th, 2021. So he's making this prediction here after these events, but before these events. And, of course, they're not going to come to pass, as he predicts. This date here is given us because that's the date of the election. These dates, Colin actually likes to look at December 25th, 2022, but he ignores this date. But the thing is, if we have a chronological structure, can we just say we're not going to take these dates and put them on the calendar? Or, or can we say that these dates are insignificant because Colin didn't put them there? No, we know they're significant because we've already examined these dates. Right? So, now we also have, of course, this is the date that I'm going to invite the Canadian group to the study the next day. So it's connected to December 25th. So we could put December 25th there. And we know December 25th is the first day of the 10th month. And, and then this one symbolically connects to April 5th, 2030, right? Because of... The 2,640 days, which means that this is a symbol of the first day of the 10th month, just as December 25th is, and this is 88 times 30, right, to give us that number. And, of course, we see the 264, the 26th day of the fourth month symbol there. And we had other things. We had a whole structure of connecting Colin's prediction to April 5th, 2030. I, I connect connect all of these things. I connect it to when I was born, connect it to all of the other structures that we have. It's a very complex structure. But the point is, these dates exist even if Colin didn't put them there because it's suggested and the fact that they fit to this date means, for me, when I did this, I said, not only do I agree with the basic premise of his argument, I can see that it actually connects to this. And remember, on October uh, 13th, 2021, I'm going to talk about April 5th, 2030. And in this history, I'm going to talk about it, right? On, it's going to be, what, January 24th, where um, I write in and say, you know, we, it, yeah, I, we did this in our study. So shortly after this, we're going to have this April 5th, 2030 date in our study, and we're going to continue to study it all through this history. And we're going to find November 22nd, the anniversary of, of this November 22nd, two years later, is going to be this date that is the 2688 in it. So we just have multiplied all of these symbols to point to this symbolic date. So we have to say that there's something about this date. <clears throat> now
Now, we looked at this date in another way. So this is sort of completely different. But when we were looking in the story of, of Barak, I believe it was Barak who had his Hebrew number 1301. I don't think that was Gideon. Um, I could look it up. But we looked at this, this story of these first days of the first month. So we also, well, I guess the other one I should do first. Here, I'll do this one first. Because we connected this with the story of Ezra chapter 7 to 10. right? And we, we've already touched on this, but I just want to remind you of it. That when we took um, the first day of the first month in 457 B.C., as a symbol of 9-11, right, that we could connect 9-11 to this April 5th, 2030 date. I'm not going to go on all the details of it, but we can connect this to this by the 354 months for the 354 days. A day for a month. So 9-11 connects to April 5th, 2030, and it's using that history in 457 B.C. from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month. And April 5th, 2030 is the first day of the first month. So we could connect to these. 9-11 is a symbol of the first day of the first month, right? Because it's April 19th. It's the second angel arriving. So we could connect this, this history in two different ways using months in two different ways. But that means that the story of Ezra, the story about the first day of the first month and this first day of the first month, is connected to this day, first day of the first month, which we would call April 19th, 1844, right? That's going to be the first day of the first month as well. But that's not the only first day of the first month. The first first day of the first month is in 1533 B.C., right? So in 1533 B.C., prior to 1533 B.C., did they count the months? Did they number them? No, right? They just gave them a name. Now, we could say, well, what about the story of Noah? They, they can number the months there. But they're not numbering the months in the year starting in the spring or in the fall, they're numbering the months based upon how old Noah is, right? So it's the, the second month on the 17th day in the 600th year of Noah's life. So you could count months from an event like a birth or something else and you could count the number of months. But those aren't the months, those numbers aren't numbering the months in the year. It's not till 1533 that we begin to number the months. This month shall be to you the beginning of months. Before that, it's not the beginning of months. No month is, right? There's all kinds of calendars. You count different ways. You just name the months. That's what the Babylonians did. That's what the Jews did. They didn't number them. But now they're going to number the months. Does somebody have a comment there? What's that? Well, they have the beginning of the month. They count, they count the months, like the days of the month, but they don't call Abib the, the first month. They don't call Tishri, or, well, I guess it would be, uh, what's it called? Um, Nethanim, or not, no, it's Ethanim, something like that, which is the seventh month. They don't call it the seventh month, right? So it's going to be Barak, I was right. His, his number, his Hebrew number is 1301. So that's one of the things we noticed about Barak. He was connected to this. Now, as a span of time, if I count the days from here to here, 
it's 1,301,000 days. So that's a nice number. Now the thing about uh, those number of days is it's, um, where did I write this here? I don't know if I have it on this page. So. Yeah, I didn't seem to write it down. Oh, that's where I am. I'm on the wrong page. That's, that would always do it. Okay. Now that number of days is, is, is interesting in that it connects with that symbol. Now, there was something else about that symbol, and I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, I can't remember. It's going to be a certain number of months, and I just can't remember what the number of months is. But we do have, um, uh, you know, I, in this chart that I have here, I count from the first day of the first month in 1533 to the first day of the fir uh, first month in 457. And this is going to be 1109 years, that's lunar years, plus one month. So that's just one month more than 1109. And 1109 would represent, represent November 9th. Now actually, the Babylonians keep the first day of the first month one month earlier on March 27th in 457 BC. So that would be 1109 November 9th month, but that one extra month is that leap month that's going to be added, and this is going to be April 26th, uh, 26th day of the fourth month in 457 BC. If I had this other month, it'd be the 27th day of the third month, right? So if I went 1109 months, I'd come to the 13th month beginning, but the Babylonians that year add, didn't add the 13th month, the the, the Jews did, so they're going to start the year one month earlier in that year. Okay? And then we have from the first day of the first month, um, if we count the number of months, it's going to be 490 prophetic years, less two weeks. So if we count from the first day of the first month in 457 BC, and we count the prophetic months, that is, 360 times 490, it's going to bring us to 14 days past, or 14 days less than um, 490 prophetic years. So it's less two weeks. So it's two weeks short. And then from the first day of the first month in 27 AD to the first day of the first month in 1844, it's, so, yeah, I need the one in 27 AD here. So this one's important. Right, the first day of the first month in 27 AD. And that's important, why? Because that's going to be the one we use when we get this date, okay? And between these two dates is 187 or 1,872,000 000 lunar years. That is 12 times 1,872 is going to give you that period of time plus 10 lunar months. So plus 10 months. Okay, so it's, it gives you this, but it gives you this 10 months extra. So here you got one month extra for that symbol. Here you get 10 months extra. And for this period here, it's 490 prophetic years is... Uh, 176,400, right? Number of days, right? In, but this is going to be minus 14 days between these. But we get that symbol, right? So we have these symbols, but they're not quite complete. Not sure why. But from this one, of course, you're going to get... Uh, this period of time. For, for here to 9-11, so I'm just going to put 9-11 here because 9-11 is the other symbol of the first day of the first month. 
as a symbol, right? It's not the first day of the first month. It's the 21st day of the sixth month. But it's the first day of the first month as a symbol. And you're going to have 1946 months. And those months are lunar months. They're just the months if you looked at the moon. And then here, you're going to have, of course, we already dealt with that, 354 months. Right? In two different ways, lunar and um, prophetic. Right? So we have all of these symbols. So every one of these spans has that symbol in it, even if it's not exact to the day. And that would be really hard to do um, and to have everything else work. But it gives you those symbols that we have already seen. So this first day of the first month symbol in April 5th, 2030 fits into these structures and can't be really removed from it. <clears throat> so what I say about this in conclusion, so I'm not going to, we're going to finish this one a little bit early because I'm tired. Um, but also we have said a lot today and it said a lot in this study. All of the evidence shows that April 5th, 2030 is a symbolic date that supports the structure of prophetic chronology. It witnesses to God's leading in, of this movement. It is not meant to be a date used for a prediction of an event, even if we have a temptation to do so. We have learned that we cannot predict events. We can only measure the time. As time passes, we will see what these events mean for now, we simply need to address our present duty. Measuring the time is part of watching and waiting. That is what we are doing. We're measuring the time. We're watching and waiting. We're trying to understand where we are. We need this light for our feet. And this is light. I don't see how any, anyone in this movement, I don't even see how a Seventh-day Adventist could argue against these structures that we have. They're extremely powerful. But for us in this movement, we know these symbols and we can't just brush them aside. You know, and, and anyway, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. There's a few other things I could point out, but I don't think it's really useful at this time. So I ask that you can join me in prayer. Um, we've done a lot today. Right, today's been um, a blessing right, in the things that God has shown us. And we have people we need to pray for. And we need to pray for ourselves. And we know that we have trials ahead of us. And, um, and so we just want to ask God to be with us and to continue to be with us. So let's pray. <clears throat> hmm. Dear Father in heaven, this Sabbath has been a great Sabbath, a great blessing. As always, you come near to us and you provide for us spiritual food. We have had a bounty here, not just today, but this week, but especially today. We pray for this movement. We pray for ourselves. I don't know how we can neglect such great light, but we do. We pray for the people in Africa, even though they're sleeping, many of them. We know that they're going to awaken in the morning and spend time studying these things together. And we know, Lord, that um, you are moving upon the hearts of people all around the world people who've been in this movement in the past, people who are seeing these truths for the first time. And Lord, we just ask that your work that you do upon the human heart, that you can do it and do it quickly, that we can cooperate with you and that Christ can return soon. We definitely don't want to wait till 2030 we want to see Jesus face to face as soon as possible. But we know we have a work to do. And we ask that you can help us to do that work, to commit our lives to you. 
we are few. We have few resources of our own, but we have your resources. You have the cattle on a thousand hills. You have the Holy Spirit that works upon people's hearts and that has worked upon our heart for years and continues even though we resist. And so we pray for one another. Thank you. Be with us through this night and into tomorrow. We pray that you can watch over us, that your angels can be around us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.